aspect of the craft of writing young adult fiction? So, yes. Um, can I just hug her? Yes. <laughs>
from her POV, and yet she's not really likable. She's kind of obnoxious and rich, which is, that's another thing that's off-putting sometimes. It's just wealth that we can't have. So maybe jealousy is, you know, at play there too. But anyway, so looking at that protagonist hero thing is interesting when you look at your own writing. Because if you look at a character and you see somebody says, oh, you know, I just can't like them. Ask yourself, you know, what role they're really playing in that book. And what that might mean in terms of your understanding of their likability and whether or not you accept leaving them unlikable or not. Um, so then the next question that came up as I did my homework is, is it a gender thing? Um, anybody read Courtney Summers? Some girls are cracked up to be, this is not a test all for anything. Okay, she's a, there's another, I can give you a reading this later. I'm not going to read any quotes, I just got 10 minutes here. But um, she writes notorious mean girls. She's got a lot of novels and she's gotten a lot of press and has written a lot. She's a young adult author, you can Google her too, um, about writing unlikable characters and, and her defense of them. And I think the mean girl, you know, is an entire genre unto herself in arts and literature. So, you know, there are many unlikables in this vein that are female. However, we can talk Holden Caulfield, right? In The Catcher in the Rye, who's probably the original annoying self involved main character. Um, God, that book is. You know, I tried to reread it. I don't know, anybody tried to reread that lately and just been like, I'm a little tired for this. It's a good, you know, if you don't really want to take one of those, I'll leave PM. But anyway. Um, but, or um, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which was also a movie, uh, the main character is very weepy. I mean, both Holden Caulfield and, I want to say his name is Charlie, but I couldn't remember when I was making my notes. The narrator who writes all the letters um, in that novel, they're both depressed. And so there are male depressives. And then you look at, um, who's the guy that just got into all that scandal? Who wrote, right? Andrew Smith, Winger, anybody got that book? So again, you've got sort of um, notions of mental illness, and intriguingly, I found a lot of examples of the male gender, just, it's anecdotal, but, so you know, you get your mean girl and your depressed dude, and, and both of them have certain types of unlikability. One is trying to control more than their share of the world, and one is probably releasing control more than they should. So those are some issues in unlikability that you can find in my literature. Um, which brings us to my third point, I'm trying to be quick because we have 10 minutes here, which is, is self-involvement, whether it's trying to be the domineering queen bee, trying to escape from the world, you know, just closing on oneself, is self-involvement synonymous with being unlikable? Any yay voters? I don't know, it's, it's an honest question, something to think about. Um, is there sort of an inherent unlikability in I? And so when we look at particularly contemporary YA lit, which is frequently first-person present tense narration, there's a lot of it, not all, and, but that it's naturally introspective. Um, you look at, um, actually these aren't all, all I protagonists, but they're certainly introspective and world-weary, like, um, Samantha in My Life Next Door, or Clary in the Mortal Instruments series, anybody read those? Juliet and Batman's Daughter. Um, so those are some examples. So um, when you think about teenagers and where they are in space and time, um, underdeveloped frontal lobes, sorry. I'm sure it's coming. Yours is probably much better than my kids. But you know, that they have, um, they have work to do on themselves, and they're just developing a physical and a social awareness. So every question is, what can I change about what I see and think and feel to make me fit into this bigger picture? And that's intrinsically I. And you know, it's interesting because I was thinking in sort of the conclusive beginning question is, you know, the qualities that correlate to unlikability might be the weaknesses and vulnerabilities that we like least in ourselves. So when we find an unlikable character, we are at a certain level finding a relatable character. So the question for us as readers and writers is, you know, to understand that equation and to try to sort of balance it. And I was thinking, you know, have you ever said, except for you and you, I'm so glad I'm not in high school anymore. 
I'm so glad I don't have to do X or Y again or endure prom or whatever it was. And there's and but the main character in that book is enduring it. And the reason that we are so glad is we have this perspective that isn't as self-involved or is able to step away and see that it didn't really matter so much. And so to make a main character who's in high school entirely likable and not self-involved might not be realistic. So it's a, it's a conundrum. And so I'm going to finish with a one-sentence quote for a two-sentence quote from the, uh, the Hub, which is the blog of the Young Adult Library Services Association. And I don't have an attribute. This is posted on the blog, and I can't figure out which of the contributors wrote it. So with apologies, but I can send the link if somebody really wants to know. And you can try to dig into it. Unreliable, whiny, unlikable liars. We've all read characters like this. I'd love to read a good book with a bad and or unreliable narrator. This kind of flawed storyteller reaches to the reader and asks us to question, look deeper, and ponder truth and lies. It is a sign of, ex of an excellent author who can manipulate you to love the book and hate the character. Skilled writers make the reader believe the lies and then accept the truth. So it's not a conclusion, but it's kind of an interesting thought in which to leave. Or we have a lovely introduction for Jeannie. And um, you know, I'm around, so if you want to enlighten me or argue later, I'm, you know, I have a babysitter. <laughs>